Welcome back again with me, Hamza Sheikh. We have two more fantastic guests with me now. Again, we have an architect and a journalist. With me, I have Ollie Wainwright, Ollie Wainwright, architecture critic at The Guardian. And we also have Anna Liu, who is the director at Tonkin Liu Architects. Ollie, if I can start with you. Let me just say, I think you know what makes a building extraordinary. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't have a, a job then, would you? So I, 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 I want to ask you, what do you think will be the deciding factor this year for the judges? It's so difficult because every year it comes down to what kind of message the judges want to send. Essentially, any one of these six buildings is worthy of winning the prize. They've all got to a level where they're ticking all of the boxes, whether that's sustainability or you know, community involvement or the longevity of the building. I think it comes down to what the kind of wider issue is that the judges want to tackle and in the building that kind of goes above and beyond fulfilling the usual requirements. So to me, that would either be the Hackney Primary School that kind of has a kind of impact beyond the bounds of its site or a building like the Magdalen Library, which is just kind of an exquisitely crafted, you know, incredibly beautiful piece of architecture. So it's that kind of extra deciding factor that pushes it. So we know your favourites, um, uh, some amazing projects there. Anna, I'd love to ask you, obviously, I'm a big fan of Tonkin Liu Architects, your work is amazing, but you guys are not just known for your architecture, but your landscape design, and what I love the most, your art installations. And um, what I love and I want to ask you about is, architecture has gone through a lot of changes, seems to be going through more changes now, especially after COVID, and the services that architects provide seems to be diversifying. What do you think about that kind of more multidisciplinary kind of business framework or template that architects may not need to just design buildings anymore? I think in a way, as architects, we have to ask what, what is architecture? And it's much broader than a building and obviously it's a holistic way of thinking about problems. And we are facing you know, incredible, tremendous problems such as climate, COVID and, and wars. And I think we're great at visualizing problems and being incredibly creative about how to look outside of the box and, and creating kind of visual, practical, scientific and artistic solutions to these problems. So it's a kind of holistic entity that, that you know, an approach that we would advocate. It's amazing. And, and again, like, you know, sustainability again being definitely seems like the emphasis this year. Um, Oli, I'd love to ask you what, as a journalist, I asked this to Elie Stathaki. I think it's good to ask journalists this question. What excites you about architecture? Why, why, why are you writing about architecture? Oh, I suppose I always think of it rather than a critic's role to be just to kind of give our opinion from the ivory tower of, you know, academia and, and architecture criticism, is to actually unpick the often invisible forces that shape the built environment, you know, whether they're the kind of economic or political or social forces, and explain those to the general reader and kind of actually try and deduce, you know, wh why has a building ended up the way it has? You know, not just to give my opinion, but to kind of unpick the, the very complex processes that led to that physical result. So the Hackney School is a really interesting example. You, know, you have this tower block of luxury flats that's there to pay for the primary school because yep. education is such a kind of poorly funded sector at the moment. So it's those kind of secret stories that I try to reveal in my writing. Secret stories. You heard, you heard it here first, guys. If you're looking to get a good review by Ollie, secret stories. <laughs> Anna, very quickly, tell us, who do you, who do you think is going to win? I'm voting for the college, uh, the library, sorry. Um, it has this incredible gravitas and lightness at the same time. You know, obviously beautifully crafted and it sort of encompasses architectural excellence.